Hello guys and welcome back! I am super excited for today's video as we're hosting a fall themed dinner party. Everything from amazing delicious recipes, decor and make ahead tips. We have a full menu to tackle from the main course to side dishes, appetizers, desserts and fancy seasonal martinis that taste amazing. And this beautiful floral arrangement. If you enjoyed today's video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and get started. If you watched my previous hosting videos, you know me, that I'm a huge advocate to prepare as much as possible the days prior to your events. Make your home feel inviting, prepare your dishes, and definitely make a list right next to your menu of all the ingredients that you'll need. The worst thing to happen is while you're in the middle of cooking, realizing that you're missing an important ingredient that you need immediately. I went grocery shopping this morning and now I'm ready to get started. There are a few things that I'll prepare the day before, starting with marinating this orange chicken roast with fennel and shallots and letting it sit in the fridge until tomorrow. If you're looking for an impressive yet easy to make dinner centerpiece, you've come to the right place. This chicken is doused in a citrusy herby marinade and roasted over a bed of tart oranges, fennel and shallots. It's bright, refreshing and so fragrant. Your kitchen will smell so inviting after roasting this. Grind 3 tablespoons of fennel and 3 tablespoons of coriander seeds. To a small bowl add the crushed seeds, 2 teaspoons of garlic powder, 3 tablespoons of salt, half a cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of honey, 2 teaspoons of Dijon mustard, zest of 4 oranges, Separately chop 5 sage leaves and 2 sprigs of thyme and add them to your mixture. These herbs give a perfect aroma to your chicken, so don't skip them. Mix everything well until combined. Well, here we have it. 4 pounds each, Bonnie and Cluck. Pat dry the chickens using paper towels and if the chicken comes stuffed with its neck, save that for a chicken stock. Place the chicken breast side down on a board and using a pair of kitchen shears cut around the spine of the chicken, left and right, and save it for a stock. Flip the chicken breast side up and place your palm on top of the breast and press against it to crack the wishbone and flatten the breast. And we are left with the chicken spatchcock. Generously spread the marinade all over the chicken in an even layer focusing on the skin, not so much on the cavity. Give Bonnie and Cluck a good massage because it's the last one they will have. I am serving for 8 adults plus 5 children, so I'll need to double my recipe. If you're roasting one chicken, make sure to divide this recipe in half and I will include the instructions in the notes below. This is also perfect if you're roasting a turkey instead of a chicken. For a turkey, make sure you double the marinade though and adjust the cooking time. Set it aside for a few minutes while you're preparing the rest of your ingredients. Slice the oranges into about half an inch thick. Then slice the greens off of two fennel bulbs and save the fronds for plating. Slice each bulb in about five to six slices through the root end, then thinly slice the shallots.
To a large baking pan with tall sides to catch all the drippings, add the oranges in a single layer. Then top with fennel and sprinkle the shallots all over. Then I'm going to transfer Bonnie and Cluck directly on top, breast side up. Tuck the wings underneath the breast to prevent them from burning. I'm covering Bonnie and Cluck with the double plastic wrap and placing in the fridge overnight. And I will see them both tomorrow. Next on the menu is everyone's beloved creamy mac and cheese. This is a great dish to prepare a day in advance. The most important part of this dish is a high quality selection of cheeses, such as Gruyere, Parmesan cheese and mozzarella. The best way to shred a significant amount is by using your food processor. It never disappoints. Place your shredding blade side up and turn it on while dropping slices of cheese into your food processor. You will need two cups of grated Gruyere cheese, one cup of Parmesan cheese and one cup of mozzarella cheese. And you can use any help that's being offered. Meanwhile, cook the pasta in salted water, following the package instructions, but reducing the cooking time by 2 minutes. While the pasta cooks to al dente perfection, in a large skillet, melt one stick of butter over medium-low heat. Once melted, add 4 tablespoons of flour and stir until a smooth mixture forms, cooking for about 1 minute until it begins to bubble. Season the sauce with 3 4th teaspoons of salt, half a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper, and 1 teaspoon of nutmeg. Gradually incorporate 3 cups of milk into the mixture, stirring continuously until it becomes a smooth sauce. Continue stirring until it reaches a boil and starts to thicken. Remove the saucepan from the heat and add the cheeses, stirring until they melt and blend beautifully into the sauce. Prepare to be amazed by the abundance of cheese that graces this dish. It's a cheese lover's dream come true. Drain the cooked pasta and add it to the sauce, ensuring every strand is coated in the creamy goodness. I have some cooked turkey bacon that I'm going to dice thinly. My guests do not eat beef and pork and I had to make sure to use chicken or turkey in all of my recipes. Layer your pasta in a large baking pan halfway, then sprinkle with diced cooked turkey bacon. Now top with the remaining mac and cheese, then cover it with plastic wrap and place it in the fridge until you're ready to bake it. We will come back to it tomorrow. Another perfect make-ahead dessert is this Ina Garden Pumpkin Swiss Roll. This is a delicious cake and the recipe itself moves really fast. Begin by preheating your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. In a bowl of an electric mixer fitted with the whisk attachment, place 3 eggs, 1 cup of granulated sugar, and 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract and beat on medium-high speed for 3 minutes until light yellow and thickened. Add 3 4th cup of pumpkin puree and 2 tablespoons of neutral oil and continue stirring until combined. Turn off the mixer. In a sifter add 3 4th cup of all-purpose flour, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, stir and sift. Use a spatula to combine until you no longer see any streaks of the dry ingredients. This color is so beautiful.
Line a baking pan with parchment paper, pour your batter and spread evenly. Bake the cake for 10 to 12 minutes until the top springs back when gently touched. While the cake is baking, lay out a clean kitchen towel on a flat surface and dust roughly a quarter cup of powdered sugar. This will prevent the cake from sticking to the towel. As soon as you remove the cake from the oven, loosen it around the edges and invert it onto the prepared towel. Gently peel away the parchment paper. Roll the warm cake and the towel together. starting at the short end of the cake. Set it aside and allow to cool completely at room temperature. Meanwhile, make the filling. In a bowl of an electric mixer, whip together 12 ounces of Italian mascarpone cheese, one and a quarter cup of powdered sugar, and half a cup of heavy cream, until light and fluffy. To assemble, carefully unroll the cooled cake and spread the cake evenly with the filling. Reroll the cake in a spiral using the towel as a guide. Remove the towel and trim the ends to make a neat edge. Cover with plastic wrap and place in the fridge until ready to serve. This is a perfect make-ahead dessert. Today is the big day and I got started around 8.30 a.m. I strongly recommend writing your whole menu planning in a notebook and checking things off as you go. Prioritize your cooking based on the timing that it takes to prepare them as well as whether you're serving them hot or cold. I'm preparing several side dishes that can be served cold so I'm starting with those. The first one is this false farro salad with butternut squash and brussels sprouts. This is a hearty salad that's packed with seasonal autumn ingredients and tossed in a tangy apple cider vinaigrette. Begin by thinly slicing your Brussels sprouts. You can use a mandolin. Make sure to be safe though. This is a vegetarian salad. I'm using this slicer, which I call the executor. <laughs> Doesn't it remind you of medieval times? Slice one shallot as well and transfer it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Salt and pepper to taste and drizzle with olive oil, then use the spatula to mix it all until combined. On the second baking tray, place roughly three cups of cubed butternut squash. Chop some fresh rosemary, roughly one teaspoon, and add it to your butternut squash along with a pinch of salt. Drizzle with olive oil and maple syrup and transfer both trays in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, let's prepare the extra delicious dressing. To a jar, add a quarter cup of olive oil, one to two tablespoons of maple syrup, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, salt and pepper to taste, and shake very well. Set it aside. You can also prepare this dressing a day ahead and just keep it in the fridge. Checking on the veggies in the oven. After 20 minutes, remove the Brussels sprouts, flip the butternut squash and continue to cook until tender and golden. To a large bowl, add the roasted veggies, 
the cooked and chilled farro and top it with your delicious dressing. Toss to combine, then cover with the lid and place in the fridge until you're ready to serve. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to prepare these amazing puff pastry appetizers filled with creamy brie, fig jam, and walnuts. I absolutely love serving flaky mini puff pastry bites with a martini or a cocktail. Slice your brie cheese into bite-sized cubes. On a floured surface, roll out the thawed puff pastry and slice it into 12 equal sized squares. Press each square into an individual muffin tin cup. Place a brie cube in each puff pastry cup, a few walnut pieces, followed by a dollop of fig jam. I have a few hours left until my guests arrive, so I'm placing these in the fridge until ready to bake. Next, I will get started on the potato gratin, one of my husband's favorite. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Thinly slice five medium Yukon potatoes by using a mandolin slicer. In a skillet, melt two tablespoons of butter, then add one diced shallot. Saute on low heat for 5 minutes until the shallots are lightly caramelized. I just took one head of roasted garlic from the oven and I'm burning my fingers attempting to squish the garlic out of it, so I did it off camera. The idea is you need one head of garlic confit. Caramelize it together with the shallots on low heat. In a large bowl, add your sliced potatoes and your caramelized onion and garlic, followed by one and a half cups of heavy cream and the grated cheese. I have one cup of Gruyere cheese and half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Add one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of nutmeg. Mix it very well to combine. Arrange the sliced potatoes in a spiral pattern and add the remaining cheese sauce on top. Cover the baking pan and place in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for one hour. While the potato gratin are baking in the oven, I'm setting the table really quickly. I bought this beautiful tablecloth from Home Goods, and I love how perfectly it matches the fall theme I'm going for. To decorate my table, we're putting together this beautiful floral arrangement. This is my first attempt at making a floral arrangement from flowers that are not roses, since I'm so obsessed with them. I'm not the most creative person, however, I believe this turned out very beautiful. My girls helped me and gave me the inspiration. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I had this idea to create a harvest element at my table that my guests will be able to enjoy by using these dessert glasses and filling them up with seasonal fruit like grapes, overflowing the glass. I almost ran out of grapes because my little helpers kept sneaking a few into their bellies. Well, I guess someone needs to make sure I'm serving good quality food. It was beautiful to have this set up with my daughters. They always ask to help me and I love sharing my creation moments with them. I almost 
almost forgot to share with you that I printed menus for my dinner party and they came out beautiful. All of my guests were so impressed by it and it definitely elevated the dinner table. The whole decoration process took me no longer than 30 minutes. At this point, I have three hours left before my guests arrive, so I definitely need to take Bonnie and Cluck out of the fridge and bring them to room temperature. My potato gratin is baked, so now I will bake the mac and cheese and the puff pastry appetizers. Brush the puff pastries with an egg wash and for the mac and cheese, make the breadcrumb topping. In a bowl, combine one cup of panko breadcrumbs with two to three tablespoons of melted butter. Sprinkle this mixture evenly over the macaroni, adding a delightful crunch to every bite. Bake both of these dishes in a preheated oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. Place the mac and cheese on the bottom and keep an eye on them and rotate as needed. Both of these dishes can be baked at the same temperature and I can warm them up later before serving. Meanwhile, I'm preparing another autumn side dish, this roasted Brussels sprouts and grapes. This is a Martha Stewart inspired side dish. It is earthy, it is rich in flavor and all the elements come together beautifully. On a baking sheet, arrange one pound of Brussels sprouts and one pound of grapes. Make sure you slice the large Brussels sprouts and just keep the small ones whole. Salt and pepper to taste and drizzle with two to three tablespoons of olive oil. Sprinkle with one tablespoon of brown sugar and transfer it to a preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until caramelized and tender for roughly 20 to 25 minutes. When the time is up, add one cup of pecans and place it back in the oven for another 5 to 10 minutes or until toasted. When done, assemble on your platter, sprinkle with crumbled goat cheese, drizzle with balsamic vinegar and serve it immediately. The grapes are the perfect addition as is the balsamic vinegar. They add a sweetness that brings out the nutty notes in the sprouts. All the flavors come together to create this amazing fall side dish. I'm serving two types of drinks today and one of them is this fall apple cider wine cocktail. All you'll need is slices of one apple, cinnamon sticks, one to two bottles of apple cider depending on the size of your pitcher. Top it with one bottle of white wine. Add three tablespoons of maple syrup. And the best ingredient is half a cup of Grand Marnier. You can also use bourbon if that's what you have on hand. You can make this cocktail in advance and just place it in the fridge. Serve it cold and enjoy. I have one hour left until my guests arrive and I'm assembling and serving everything I have ready. The farro salad has been absorbing the amazing flavor of the dressing. I'm transferring it to a serving platter and topping it with half a cup of yellow raisins and a quarter cup of pumpkin seeds for a crunch. These delicious puff pastry bites with melted brie, fig jam and walnuts are ready and I'm simply assembling them on a platter and serving on the table. The last appetizer on the menu are these honey caramelized spicy carrots that I absolutely love. They are super delicious and extremely easy to prepare. On a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, place your carrots and drizzle with olive oil, honey, Sprinkle with salt and pepper to taste and one teaspoon of chili powder. Transfer to a 425 degree preheated oven 
and bake for 20 to 30 minutes or until caramelized. You want to toss them around every 7 minutes or so to make sure they roast evenly. You probably noticed that I have both chickens roasting in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit at the same time. While the chickens and carrots are roasting, I had a few minutes to jump in the shower and get ready. I have roughly 20 minutes left until my guests arrive and I'm extremely excited about how everything is coming together. Hey everyone, welcome. And today I'm hosting a fall party and I'm waiting for my guests right now. And some of the food is still in the oven, but the table is ready. Let me show it to you. And I'm really excited for this party because I've never hosted anything like that. And the table came out pretty beautiful and all the menu and all the food is, is so beautiful and so delicious. I've test tasted it so many times and I'm very excited and very much looking forward to it. I really hope you enjoy today's video and let me know if you're interested in hosting videos like this. So. Let's get started. So here's the table coming together. I still have to put some more food on the table. Some of it is in the oven. Some of it I have to warm up. I have the potato gratin, the mac and cheese, and the orange fennel chicken to serve. And that's in the oven right now. Also the caramelized carrots, so. That's coming. <laughs> My friends are starting to arrive and I'm always happy to see their reactions and excitement. No. I know you always. The honey glazed carrots are ready and I'm chopping some toasted pistachios to sprinkle on top and serve them immediately. My girlfriends are always excited when I come up with a new martini recipe that matches the theme or the season I'm hosting. Today I'm serving the pomegranate Grand Marnier martinis that have the perfect color and fall flavor. Pomegranate martinis are a sweet tart with pomegranate juice, vodka and orange liqueur, such as Grand Marnier. This ruby red martini recipe comes together in minutes. I will leave the recipe in the notes below. It pairs perfectly with the fig brie appetizers. And I love how my friend is trying to figure out what's in these mini puff pastry bites. The internal thermometer went off, which means my chickens are baked to perfection. The baking instructions are very simple and I will include them in the notes below. But definitely let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Plate the chicken on a large platter with the remaining oranges, fennel, and use some fennel fronds to decorate it. The best method to serve the chicken is to carve it in advance, but I had all my friends coming through the door and I didn't want the rest of the food to get cold. So I served it as is and we carved into it as I was serving everyone. In the last few minutes, I turned the broiler on, topped the potato gratin with a handful of grated cheese, and broiled for three to four minutes. Now watch this one very closely because you can get distracted easily. I almost did. And as always, I will have measurements and ingredients for each recipe in the notes below, including tips and tricks on how to get everything ready in time. The second chicken was served warm when the husbands joined us, which was two hours later. We got to enjoy some girls time with delicious food and amazing company. I always treasure moments like this, 
welcoming my friends and family into my home, cooking delicious meals with love, and creating lifetime memories for us and our beautiful children. I got you saying that. <laughs> that is good. Mm, really good. I think I would not buy two of them. For dessert, I served the pumpkin Swiss roll with mascarpone frosting I prepared the day prior. And right before my guests arrived, I put in the oven an Italian pear cake that I already have on my channel. I will link it for you in the notes below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more hosting videos like this. Let me know in the comments what other hosting videos would you like to see. See you next time!